following is an audio excerpt from Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, by John Abdo. Given our access to the richest food sources in all the known world, Crotonians ate exceptionally well. Likewise, to enhance our ability to perform greater labors, while concurrently augmenting our sports performance skills, we supplemented our nutrition with a variety of potions amalgamated from herbaceous and feral origins. Chymos was the title assigned to this classification of alimentary brews, several of which were Anip's own recipes, and others of which were formulated inside the laboratories of Pythagoras and Caliphon. The concoctions, as might be expected, were difficult to swallow, but after ingestion, the resulting surge in mental clarity and physical robustness was invigorating. Unlike the Roman brew drink known as Pyxis, which is derived from the ashes of parched barley, wheat, and beans, Crotonian Chymos is derived from unadulterated sources. By way of prototypical purification processes, the most efficacious ANDROGENIC anabolic properties are extracted from their raw materials. Thereafter, alchemies and procedures, which have remained proprietary to Crotonian laboratories, consolidate various combinations of these nutritional medicinal sources to synergistically fortify the formula's efficacy. Some of the botanicals included wild and harvested plants grown on Diotimo's lands and throughout Magna Gracia, Epimedium, wild oats, stinging nettles, fenugreek, ashwagandha, tribulus, truffles, mushrooms and other fungi, the buds, seeds, stalk, and hemp from cannabis, and the bark from the yohimbe tree. After the rut, as their procreative hormonal optics return to states of relative dormancy, several species of hoofed ruminants naturally discard their antlers. These seasonal bony outgrowths contain superfluous amounts of neurotropic growth factors that serve as biological restorative agents, otherwise referred to as adaptogens. Between December and March, with the help of the wolves, we would scan the forests, gathering freshly discarded ungulate racks. Processors would then scrape the velvet off the horns, extract the hormone-rich marrow, and cut the bones into slices. These raw materials were then placed into a pot filled with a precise combination of mongoose blood and pregnant swine urine, then infused with many of the herbals mentioned above. With periodic frequency, the testicles of castrated bulls and swine were consumed raw or steeped into our soups. Regularly, along with the given animal's blood and semen, other vital organs, such as brains with their pituitary, pineal, and hypothalamus glands, thyroids, pancreases, gall bladders, livers, and adrenals were also tossed into the mixtures. As for our chymos, some we drank, others we blended into a paste mixed with honey, mashed figs, or dates. In addition to dramatic surges in mental and physical powers, our capacity to endure stress and tolerate pain was greatly enhanced. Tasks that would have normally reduced our breathing to hyperventilation became readily achievable, while resistances that might have once strained our strength were muscled through with ease. If you are enjoying this content, please like, follow, share, and subscribe, and I'll continue to bring you more fascinating information on Milo of Croton and other great mythological and mortal figures from antiquity. I'm John Abdo, thanking you for watching. Stay strong and healthy, and perhaps one day, thousands of years from now, people then will be remembering your name as well.